Is that better? Yep. How y'all doing today? Thank God it's Friday. Thank God it's Wednesday and Tuesday too, huh? <laughs> today, I wanted to talk about leaders and mentors and, and your physical reality and what inspires you, what motivates you. How y'all doing today? Y'all having a perfect day today? Y'all feeling good? Anybody, everybody? Hey, Jay. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 I see y'all. Hey, Don. Hey, Tyler. Hey, the last name, Lope. Okay, hey, Perez. A lot of people out here today on TikTok, scrolling through. But I wanted to talk about leaders and mentors and the things that could inspire us in our physical reality. Hi, hey you, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> Last name Lope, Lope, Blue Strip Bankroll. Okay, okay. That's a million dollar uh, status step. That's some straps that be around the bank. Uh, around the money, I used to work in banking. What you talking about, Blue Strip Bank Rule? You talking about the $10,000 bank? That's what you talking about? <laughs> Let's see. I am a leader. You can make me your man today. Okay, baby. Well, you about, you go, you just, you gonna go be my man. I don't know what you look like, but you gonna be my man, Mr. Leader. <laughs> Where you leading me to? Some more bank rules? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> what bank we gonna meet at? We're back. We're back. You play? We're going to Harris too after we go to the bank? <laughs> That's funny. Today I wanted to talk about leaders and mentors and your spiritual journey. Because in the beginning for me, it really mattered. It really made a difference for your understanding. When you get your mind, your new program that you're going to change your way of thinking to, then yeah, the leaders might take the back burner because now you know or uh, you remember, so to speak, in your conscious journey. And so now you're just gonna push the leaders aside, so to speak, and you're gonna dare to walk that walk, right? But in the beginning, it's really important that you have some type of leader, some type of mentor, you know, because it's like you're coming out of religion. And when you come out of religion, just like um, in the biblical text, how it says Jesus went to the mount and fasted 40 days and 40 nights, after the fast or after you come out of religion, the next thing that happens, you are tempted, right? <laughs> and so just because you came out of religion doesn't mean that you are not going to come into spirituality and not be so-called tempted, not be so-called led astray, like, right? <laughs> so I want to talk about that today because it's really important in the journey. Let's see. Jermaine says, you remind me of a flower ready to blossom for the world to see. Oh, and love so keep shining stay blessed oh thank you so much babe i appreciate that that feels good to read so yeah so in the beginning of my spiritual journey when i came out of religion i knew just something i had so many questions that i needed answer like right and in my search so to speak searching not for things outside in my search so to speak of inside of me getting to know myself I you stumble upon people that kind of like or on that particular journey or been where you've been because life is happening through you and you're really just a mirror of everything that you're experiencing, right? So the mirror will show you you, but when you're seeking, when you're the student, oftentimes people that's probably not on your particular frequency that are, aren't her mirrors or your direct reflections, they'll show up too. It'll be like the higher version of you, the way that you were trying to go because your higher self is always going to lead you to that next version or that next chapter is always going to be beckoning for you. And so on this particular journey, you might stumble upon so-called non-religious groups that are really part of another religious aspect, another religious belief, like, right? And I never forget on my journey during this particular moment, there's a guy, y'all might know him. I'm not going to say his name, but y'all going to know him because I don't like, you know, he's a black man. So I don't like kind of like, um... <laughs> you know, bringing black, anybody, black, white, Chinese, I don't like talking bad about people, like, right? 
because those are my reflections. But on my journey, when I first started, there was a guy who used to say, okay, you got to move from the, um, he called it the Tropic of Cancer to uh, between Cancer and Capricorn. And he had this little village, so to speak. He has this little tribe and he used to always use the word reflection, like, right? He was like, you're my reflection, right? He was a fruitarian. He was a handsome little guy. He had this little energy about himself, though, that my inner being recognized as being a little bit enticing, a little bit flirtatious, like, right? And this particular man was beckoning for women to come where he was because you had to get out of the States, like, right? And you had to go with him, right? You had to forsake all and go with him because of this, this yearning is to want to be in a spiritual world or wanting to evolve. And so if you wanted to evolve and you just came out of religion, you know, in religions, they always have like hurt people who really seeking, you know, God, so to speak. In religion, they have some naive, so to speak, people, vulnerable, so to speak, people, like, right? Broken, so to speak, people, right? You coming out of that and you're going into spirituality and lo and behold, I'm into spirituality and this God is constantly messaging me, telling me that I should come, asking me why I wasn't replying, <laughs> beckoning me to come part of his, to be part of his little spiritual group, so to speak, like, right? Now, at this time, I was still in corporate America. I was in corporate America, so I was like, dude, I'm at work. I'm not about to sell my house and all that I have and, you know, quit my job right now for a so-called tribe, like, right? So for your so-called spiritual essence, because in my heart, I felt like God could be God anywhere, right? And so, hey, Friday, thank you for being here. Hey, Gina, thank you for being here, Johnny, Jay, thank y'all. And so in my heart, I felt like, no, I don't have to go where you're beckoning me to go. I can be God right here in my state. And then at, at that, that time, I was in New Orleans, Louisiana, right? So I stopped listening to him. I, I actually stopped, uh, I blocked him on his social media app. And, you know, he went away. And as I evolved in my journey, I saw that spirit that I witnessed or that my higher being showed me how that spirit had grew and how his, this person's ego had grew and how he was deceiving women in this so-called clique or so-called spiritual group that he decided to move out of the States, right? And I'm like, wow, look at all the women that went. I was one of the women that he messaged. I was one of the women that he was telling me, you know, you're my reflection, you've got to come. But it was something in my inner being that told me, no, no, don't trust that. No, block that. No, get away from, oh, <laughs> somebody said it. <laughs> somebody said it. I didn't say it. I don't, I'm, I'm, I didn't say it. Anyway, Jay, but something told me, no. And this was when I was new to spirituality, you know, just trying to find me. And, and so this person saying that they're the reflection of me and I'm listening. And this person is doing the things that I'm trying to do, you know, cleaning up my diet, being in the sun, being around nature, realizing my God self, so to speak. I'm sharing that story with you, not to down that person. Everybody's in a different place in their journey, not even to down the people that went there because they went there purposely for a reason to remember who they were. Even the so-called shitty things that happened to them, they had to go through those things in order to get sick and tired of being in that vulnerable situation, sick and tired of having that shitty low self-concept about themselves and dare to do or be something different. It is all purposeful, good and bad, all is God but it wasn't part of my journey. You see, it wasn't part of my journey. And I'm mentioning that because my topic is about mentors and leaders. <laughs> it is so important that you have somebody, even if you don't know this person in the physical reality, when you first starting your spiritual journey, it is so important that you look up to somebody that's not luring you to come to them, that's not luring you to, to take your money, you will not have to do nothing. You could find this person on YouTube, actually. You could follow this person on YouTube and you could read your soul, is, your inner being is going to resonate with the, this person. Matter of fact, your inner being is going to lead you to this person. This person ain't going to come beckoning for you. 
Because I remember like it was yesterday, the lady that I ended up looking up to that inspired me the most in my beginning, and I wrote about her in my book, was Lisa Nichols. She was a black lady. Because I was in a parking lot at Walmart, and I was really feeling down that particular day. I was really feeling down, and I went home on purpose trying to get my energy right, trying to just, because I was just sucked. I got rained on, a truck had passed and, and splashed water on me. I was feeling low that day. And I went on YouTube and I was like, I just need somebody. I need somebody because my family, in my physical reality, everybody was still my old me, right? They were all in religion. They were all telling me that I need to go talk to Jesus, right? And I didn't want to hear that in my journey. So I was like, there's got to be somebody on here. That, that is like me, where I want to be, where I'm going. I don't want to hear nothing about Jesus. I want to hear something about my inner being that speaks life to me, that tells me more about who I am and, and what is the key to figuring out my happiness, my joy. And so I'm on YouTube and Lisa Nichols showed up. And, and, and I said to my inner being, because God never asks itself a question that he or she don't already know the answer to. I said... It's important to me that this person looks like me. Not in a racist type way, but I just wanted somebody that looks like me, that represented maybe some type of struggles that my I may have been going through, being though I am a black woman in the physical reality. So I wanted to find a black woman <laughs> that could inspire me outside of the mother type energy that I would get from my physical mother, right? But she was on the Jesus frequency. I wanted something in the spiritual realm, someone in the spiritual realm that looked like me, that was a black lady, that could speak life into me. And so for the longest, I just binge watched everything Miss Lisa Nichols said to me. I said Miss Lisa Nichols, my book too, because this was during the journey I was writing and I was figuring myself out. And she replied, she sent me a card, that's what which really touched my heart. And I'm saying that to you because <laughs> you be in such a vulnerable state coming out of religion. You already feel like you're the so-called backslider. You already feel a wonder if what you're doing is right. Like, because I got to a point, you know, where it was like, man, look, who am I praying to? Jesus, uh, God, Yahweh, Yahshua. Look, who, whoever it or you are, I need you. <laughs> So you're already in this so-called vulnerable state of being where you 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 kind of questioning this religion thing. You're feeling like a backslider. You don't know the total truth, but you know that there's something that's pushing you away from the religious aspect and turning you or transforming you into your spiritual essence. It's something that's calling you. It's something that's beckoning for you. It's something in your dreams that's waking you up in the middle of the night. It's something about your body and the transformation that's taking place. It's something about that ringing in your ear. It seems like it's almost attuning you to another frequency. It's something about the itching in your forehead. It's something about the headaches. It's something about your skin. It's something about your visions. It's something about your clairvoyancy. It's something, but you just don't know what it is just yet <laughs> and so in the midst of all of that confusion a mentor a leader somebody that inspires you is very important it's very important in your journey wait let me see before these comments get too much let's see mm. yeah hey Freddie hey Freddie yes it's nice to have a mentor yeah, I didn't have anyone when I began in 2008, so now I've been told as well. Oh, that's good, Jay. That is so beautiful. So what is mentorship for you, Jay? Because a lot of people ask me about, you know, being a mentor for them in the physical reality. Do you follow these people and keep up with them? Do you talk to them weekly, daily, monthly? How does that go? Because I do consultations, but I never, like, did one-on-one -on -one mentorship with somebody. But in this particular video, I'm really talking about, you know, just somebody that you could kind of like listen to and you could see their journey and where they're going and how they're moving. This is why I come on so often to kind of like share the things that's going on in my physical reality, just in case of one of my reflections up in there, they, they want to know what's going on today, how I'm feeling today. Am I keeping the momentum? What happened when you go through, went through this? How did you handle that situation? You know, just to kind of like leave some, some uh, food for thought. You know, because you can really only inspire. You cannot make people come 
and do the journey the way you did the journey. Let's see. Hey, uh, Chastity. Yeah, Chastity taught you. Okay. I agree. Mentorship is so essential, but scared, but scared within our, yeah, within our community. Yeah, I know. Just like the experience that I had. And so it would, with being in that vulnerable situation of finding this so-called mentor, you have to know how to discern energy, like, right? You have to know that coming out of religion, because if I had not known how to discern that energy of that guy that was leading me, <laughs> I would have probably been one of those ducks, you know? But my self-concept was up to par. My discernment, because because this is the thing with this particular person that I'm talking of, they often would get close to the camera and they always was licking their lips like in a kind of like sexual, you know, seductive kind of like way. And I'm like, but dude, we, we talking about fruit. Why are you licking your lips? You need, you need some fruit, you know, like just talk. What, quit all that licking. What, you tasting yourself? And then that, <laughs> that never sat well with me. So that was kind of like an indicator. You know, discernment don't necessarily have to be you know, you being, you know, speaking in tongues, you know, tossed in the spirit, so to speak. Discernment is your inner being telling you or giving you emotion or indicator about somebody that's not sitting well with you. Like, uh, but, but he licking his lips though. And we talking about nature. We talking about, you know, divine oneness. We talking about our soul. Why is he licking his lips so much? It could be something simple as that, but you pay attention to that because you know thyself and you know that this energy that you're getting from somebody else is not you. You know it's their energy and it's offsetting or off-putting to you because you're not used to, because you don't carry yourself that way. So that's why it's important to find a mentor and the mentor energy or the discernment that you get from them is like, oh, she gets it. I wonder how she figured it out. She's thriving. You know, she's happy, she's positive, she's inspiring, she seems, you know, she's a leader. Oh, those are great qualities. I want to be or accompany myself around, around them because even just in layman's terms, grandma said, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. So yeah, I need friends like that because that's what I'm aspiring to be like. <laughs> that's the person that can help lead me. That's the person that can help mentor me. Yeah, her right there. And so that's why I chose Lisa. I chose her. <laughs> yeah, I actually do weekly hour sessions. Oh, okay, perfect. I just was wondering. I was wondering, weekly hour sessions. That's beautiful. Because so many people ask me that. You inspire me to go live. Oh, just be me. Okay, let me know when you go live. Send it to me. Um, You know, message me. So hopefully I'll, I'll get the message. I'll be on TikTok and so I can come. And I can watch you and support you and send you some likes and stuff. That's so beautiful. Go live. I can't wait to see you. But yeah, so that's really, really important. It's really, really important. And so when you find this person, as you are still doing your thing though, because you're not taking this person, you're not trying to become this person. You're trying to become you, your name. Like you're trying to become Jade per se. You're trying to become a better version of Jay, not to become the Lisa Nichols, you know? You're not trying to be her, you're trying to become that new program Jay. You're trying to destroy the old version that you may not, sitting well, may not be sitting well with no more and evolve to the newer version of how you see it, not how other people see it and not how other people look upon Lisa the way that you see it. It's like, almost like you're getting gems from everybody you get the gems and all the gems, you're just collecting all of these gems from everybody and you spitting out anything that doesn't smell, look, taste, hear, right. You don't want it. So, so coming out of religion is a time to explore, but you gotta, you gotta reject some things. You gotta reject some things that the Hebrew Israelite saying. You gotta reject some things that the seven day of men is saying. You gotta reject some things that the dark workers are saying, but it is the perfect time to explore all of those people to see what fits best for you. And so speaking of leaders, I wanna share some of mine on this here because I'm going to um, post this on my YouTube channel. Like I said, Lisa Nichols was one first. After Lisa, Abraham Hicks, 
Abraham Hicks really left a lasting impression on my journey because she taught me the law of attraction. And I must be honest, in the beginning, I was kind of leery about her because I was deeply rooted in religion. And some of the things that she said kind of pissed me off with her, to be honest with you, because it was like one program was fighting the other program. So I would walk away from her and then I would revisit her a little later after I stopped getting, getting mad with her. <laughs> I'm just being honest. And then the next person is Dr. York. Dr. Malachi York, he taught me a lot about, you know, my physical, like, like right, the ancestors, per se, about, um, about our culture, about um, our power as melanated beings, like, right? I know if anybody, any of y'all know of him, y'all know of his story. I didn't care about these people's story. I didn't care. Like I said, I was getting my gems and spitting out the rest. I don't care about how his story started, ended, and all of that. I got the jewels from him. Another person who I um, studied a lot was um, Joe Dispenza. He taught me a lot about the energetic side of myself. Like, you know, he, he taught me about how to look at um, spirituality in a scientific kind of like way, like, you know, breaking things down to the atom, the, to the, you know, particle, the energetic frequency of myself and, and letting me know that I was, the physical was that 0.01% energy and my, my, my spiritual was a 99.999, like, right? And it made so much sense. I never really, I never re forget that my son, my oldest son read the book and he was sitting on his bed and I saw the book. It was like called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. When I first saw Joe Dispenza or, you know, got hip to him, it was through my son. And he had finished reading the book and it was just sitting there with all kind of yellow little um, highlighted parts in it. Cause I flipped through the pages and I asked my son, oh, you had this for college? You had to read this for college? What was this psychology? And he was like, no, that's a book that I bought and I, I'm finished reading it. He was like, you could borrow it, you could read it. I was like, you read all of this? Cause it was a thick book. And man, I took that sucker to work with me. And as I was going through the pages to, to read, I read half of that book in the first day. It was so good. So yeah, Joe Dispenza. So I said, um, Lisa Nichols, Abraham uh, Hicks, uh, Joe Dis Dr. Malachi York, Joe Dispenza, Florin Shin, Florin Shin. I'm not sure if you all heard of any of these people, but if you haven't, I suggest that you look into it. Florin Shin really was some one, well, she's not here in the physical reality no more, but I found her on YouTube. And on YouTube, she has a book called The Game of Life. You love them, you know? Oh, good, Katina, good. Florence Shin, she sp uh, spoke about a book called The Game of Life and how to play it. Man, that book was so, even the voice, the person that spoke on the voice, her, on the audio version of the book, her voice was so calming. And I would listen to that audio over and over. It was like they were like just doing little excerpts from the book, but yet and still they had a story. And, 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 and that's what I liked about Abraham Hicks. She always had like somebody in the hot seat, for example, who had a story. And I like things that you could get broken down in the physical reality and then show you how to apply to your right now reality, you see? Yeah, Katina says, my journey started from YouTube research. Yeah, because that is, if that's what you have, that's all you have, and you need something right now. So we're walking around with these computers in our hands. So that's what I did too. That's where my journey started too. And so, um, so right now, right now as a refresher, to be honest with you, when I'm doing my affirmations and all, I'm listening to my affirmations, the one that I have on my channel, because it's something about me hearing my voice when I go to sleep in the middle of the night, hearing my voice telling me that I'm amazing. It sinks deeply into my subconscious mind that I am beautiful and I'm worthy or whatever affirmation, because I have some about money, some about love and, and, and some about weight loss and, and building muscle and all that. I have those on my page. But just recently, I started listening to this man um, named Joseph Murphy. And he talks a lot about the subconscious mind 
And so I'm liking him, but he's recent. He's really new. I really like dealing or, or, or being mentored per se about subconscious mind, about reprogramming my mind. I'm past the things or the state of being where I care about the, the, the religion, where I care about subscribing to some kind of cult. I'm past that. I'm even past the way of thinking with the food. I saw somebody commented on my page <laughs> and her name was, um, I eat what I want, biatch. <laughs> That was her username and I was just like laughing out loud because that's so cool because I'm past the phase where I even want to even talk about the high frequency foods and, and you know what's good for this particular blood type because I've now discovered that all is mine and I now have discovered that my energy, my frequency alone could raise the vibration of the food that I'm eating. My thoughts alone can raise that so I'm really now only really into leaders or mentors that that stimulating my subconscious mind so i'm on a subconscious journey now so now my journey is greater but wherever you are no matter what where you are in your journey is perfect but get your leader get your mentor that i ain't trying to run you dry that's already the cup already is poured over and they can give to you from their abundance because because that's all they have is abundant abundance and that's all that they have is love and, and inspiration inside of you of inside of them that they can pour out to you that is so very important it is it does you no justice to be sitting there with a cell phone in your hand and you don't feed your soul with somebody that knows all these things. There's always somebody that had already been through what you're going through, you know? And they can guide you. I'm not talking about the somebodies that tell you, oh yeah, I've been through getting my ass beat and I'm still getting my ass beat. No, 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 because they still on the journey. You want somebody just a little bit higher that, oh, I used to get my ass beat, but now I've overcome that. Now my self-concept is greater than that. And now I'm drawing love to me. I'm talking about those kind of people because the other ones that are still in that particular rut, yeah, it's good to kind of like watch them grow. And if you're growing with them, y'all both evolve at the same time. But you got to be careful with them because if they've been there for a long, long, long time, they're choosing to be there. They're choosing bondage. You know, like these people, these creators, and I'm not being ugly because everybody, some people need them. Some people need to, to see, hey, there's somebody that's just like you that have a low self-concept so they don't feel like dying or ending their life. But some of these creators that have like 200,000 or 2 million subscribers or followers and everything through the duration of their journey was talking about shitty things. They're choosing to stay there and they just join everybody that's on the shitty frequency. You want to find somebody that's evolving, that's kind of like can change their story, that's growing with their story. Like, yeah, I used to have all of these narcs. Yeah, I used to. So I could teach you maybe what to look out for, but I'm also going to make you feel accountable or be accountable for your energy because you played a part in that. And so I'm going to tell you what you did. And I'm not going to talk about the knock. I'm going to talk about you. And what you did, you had a low self-concept. Yeah, I know you have one because I used to have one. So this is what I did to get out of mine. And this is how I did it to evolve to this here place. And you can too. This is the type of leader that I'm talking about. One that is leading you somewhere. And that somewhere should always be to your highest self. That somewhere is always within yourself it's never going to be outside of yourself so you don't never have to go into another country you don't have to sell all that you have so to speak you don't have to do none of those things but you sit there and you go inside yourself and figure you out and sort you out and then at the tail end of the journey you become the leader you become the inspirational speaker to other people to let them know hey i used to be there I used to be where you are. I can mentor you now. I can tell you what I, all that I did and how I went through hell and came out God. Yeah, I want to do that for you. I want to do that for you. And it's not going to cost you nothing. But your time, your time and your attention, you just got to sit there and you got to listen. And then after you listen, you got to apply the thing to your life. And you too can become a leader. You too can become a mentor. You too can remember who you are. <laughs> you too can have your cup run it over. 
Yeah, Malachi Yard. Oh, he talks about he talks about everything is for is pertaining to your body. Um, the nine ether. He talks about our hair. He talks about our solar plex. Us being condensed versions of the sun. He talks about our diet. He he talks he talks in a in an essence of um, being a black spiritualist. Like um, he talks about white, about white people too. You know, blacks and whites. And he talks about how the sun is gonna get so intense to that we won't even have to deal with that particular version of people because they're gonna be dismissed from the universe so to speak he talks about our, circ our circadian rhythm it just everything our skin and it just everything it's really 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 interesting he talks about the reset of the universe um he talks about the hidden things that they supposedly do to some of the leaders and what happens to them and where they go and you know how they hide things from us in plain sight he's really really deep yeah, I would suggest if you do listen to them, just listen, get the gym, the gems, but don't be into them comments and don't, because a lot of people judge him, is what I'm saying, because they say he had some kind of issue in his physical reality, but that man was wise, that's a wise man, he was a great leader, he taught me a lot, yeah, um, any book in particular, no, but this man wrote hundreds of books he even talks about uh, not one in particular that i could recall off the top of my head that left a lasting impression but he even talks about the aliens oh and you know what else too he taught me because i had already experienced this he gave me a, a different meaning to the energies that i was seeing because i used to see well i still do but in the beginning i was scared and shit of them i used to see like dark energies like like coming up toward me in my dream or calling me i would see like in when i would travel in the little crop fields and stuff i would see glimpses of little beans out there and i've seen many times these little dark um looking green men like right looking with all like they had all black on but they were green and that used to scare the crap out of me when i would drive i would literally try not to look at the crops just you know little circle crop circles, whatever, on the side of the road when you're passing them in them empty fields. And Malachi York went into detail about those type of beings and stuff and how we are connected to them and that we used to be green lifetimes before. And he talked about the green scientists. He was really, really deep. And it, it really was refreshing to me. He talks about how we're connected to even dolphins, some of the dolphins and the wisdom, those, like, those being our ancestors and stuff. He's, he's deep. He deeply connected. <laughs> I mean, the rabbit hole went real, real, real deep with him. I enjoyed, I enjoyed him so much. Let's see. Um, Jay said, they do all of our great leaders that way. Yeah, they make their name seem to be shitty. Like, like they just, mm, that they were into, in it for maybe money or in it to molest the girls or the babies or be gay or something like that they flip it and the leaders and then the message go out the window because then in the comments that's why i was saying don't work don't look at the comments then in the comments everybody's like how could you listen to somebody like that no because this man this man is touching my soul that's how i can listen this man is dropping some gems i don't care about all that other stuff i'm here for them gems you know so i just encourage you just to stay focused on that but Malachi York, he is the truth. Oh my God, a great black leader. Yeah, I've seen them too. Yeah, yeah, they do exist. And so he was telling, you know, telling in his lectures, you know, how we used to be green. And, you know, with time, you know, our skin color changed and stuff. He even talked about how, um, how we used to be like pretty much the Anunnaki. Like we are them, like, you know, stepping down now but yet evolving back up because up and down, that's what we do. Civilizations, you know, rise and then they fall and stuff. He was really, 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 really deep. His information, his lectures are still on YouTube. Oh, and for a little bit, that guy, um, I don't want to say he was a mentor, but he just kept popping up on Facebook when I was on Facebook. That guy, Young Moon Pharaoh, I listened to him a little bit about, you know, black woman, God, yeah he was pretty cool but um i would say mentor i just think he was just a cool person a little young guy just you know 
learning about spirituality, I, I, the energy of him being so debatable. I don't feel like spirituality ain't, ain't no debate. Like I, that's the part that I didn't, I spit out kind of like, I don't, I don't care for the debate. Everybody, right? You know, because everybody has a mind and everybody believes in a different thing. And I just, I just love the fact, I think the takeaway from him was the fact that he was saying the black woman, his God, because secretly, I believe, not secretly, wholeheartedly, I believe that to be true for my existence, not to say that the black man is not though, but I just liked how he expressed it in a way being that it was coming from a man. But I, I do also believe that the black man is God too. I believe we all are God, all is God. But he just had a nice little flip on it that just made me admire his message in itself, just hearing it from a black man because you don't really hear it as loud and large and in charge as you did with young Pharaoh. The black woman is God, you know, he, he just set the tone for it. And I really enjoyed him in my journey too. But I just wanted to talk real briefly about leaders and mentors. Make sure you have one. Make sure you have one because guess what? It can get so scary in the spiritual world that you go back to religion. I had somebody on TikTok that said that. She was like, she wasn't ready to fight no demons or, or shadow selves or whatever. So she ran back to religion because that's all you know. <laughs> that's all you know. You think, wait, I'm, I might be doing this here thing wrong. These people trying to, you know, get me out of the country, take over my land and property, and they trying to use and abuse me, at least in the church, I could just, I go voluntarily, and he wasn't that, you know, <laughs> that adventurous, so to speak. So make sure you have one, make sure you have one, or make sure you have a strong mind and some discernment for yourself, so you don't lose yourself in the spiritual journey, because they have people out there that will take your money, and take from you in the spiritual realm just like they would in religion. I'm just sorry to say, and I come up in religion, so I already know how it is. Yeah, I visited his compound back in '97. Oh, in Georgia, and you talk about young Pharaoh, that's pretty cool. I saw a glimpse of it. I think he is doing really well for himself. I feel so proud of, of him. Yeah, religion is the vision. We are all one. Yeah, that's the thing about religion. And so, but coming out of that and getting to know yourself and to begin to understand that we're of that, some people get lost, by the way. They really do. A lot of them do. I've consulted with a lot of them that have got lost in a sauce behind some kind of so-called leader that was supposed to have their back and just pretty much stab them in the back. So you gotta be careful. You gotta be careful, but you gotta know discernment. You gotta know discernment. And that's why I, I wholeheartedly only come here when I'm inspired to do so. I wholeheartedly only speak when I'm inspired to do so. You know, and I don't, even though I have like a website and things going on, I don't ask people for nothing. <laughs> I put that in my inner voice or in my subconscious mind, and I allow those people to be drawn to me by free will. That's why when I found out I had somebody that was using my name, I, I was like coming on live and doing uh, TikTok saying, look, it's not me. I'm not gonna DM you. I'm not gonna ask you to give me none of your money. You keep your money. You know, I put my website on my videos. That's about it. You go to it when you read it, but you just gotta be mindful in it. And I understand about support and all that, but this, this, this thing is an energetic thing. Regardless if I, if, I, if I put my website up there or not, it's an energetic thing. You're gonna be drawn to the people you're supposed to be drawn to. I don't, I don't work, I don't operate like that with all of that doing no more. I operate by being, because everything that is purposeful for me that I'm attracting, I'm getting. Oh, I'm going to get it. <laughs> I'm getting everything that I desire over here. You know what I'm A great mentor helps and gain your power wings and you have moved on. You won't need them forever. You are so right about that, Jay. You won't. You won't. And the beautiful thing about it, a great one wants you to be greater than them. <laughs> they want you to be greater than them. They want to be like that, maybe that middle school teacher that just wants you to grow up to be an adult and just be in, in, in and admire you. And you know, when you're in your fame and, and fortune, they just want to be able to just give you a hug, you know, so to speak, and be like, man, I knew you could. I'm so glad you made it. That's all that they really want to do. They just find joy and love and seeing you make it. That's the same thing that my guru said to me. 
my guru in the physical reality he's no longer here in the spirit i mean in the physical but he would say to me he said i just want to see it i just want to see it. you're gonna be greater than me i already know it i already see it and now even in my mind because all things are connected we're always connected by love he speaks to me i can hear him laughing when when something is attained by me like when i got this house like when my sales are peaking and stuff when i'm trying to figure out something um um measurement for a certain product he speaks to me he laughs with me and when i when i get it get things flowing he's encouraging me i still hear that because love connects us to all things and i have the ears and i'm hearing him <laughs> that's what a great mentor does but they gotta be great though yeah if they keep asking for money then they aren't truly a leader a mentor they're not they're not because they're supposed to already be there, that already. They're so already supposed to have the abundance already. <laughs> how could you leave? How could the blind lead the blind? At least they both fall into the ditch. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That is so true. So it really, it really matters who you assign to be your leader or mentor, but choose wisely so you don't fall into the ditch, baby. Because your soul, your, your journey, it depends upon it. Now, you always go get it right, God, but it could become a stumbling block, an unnecessarily, uh, unnecessarily staged stumbling block for yourself if you don't have the discernment. Yeah, if you don't have the discernment enough to know that this person isn't up to par for you to be looking up to. Them. Let's see, no, your. Oh, you talk about yard. Oh, you went to yard company? Oh, because I thought, um. I thought, yeah, I know they, uh, what's his name, the little young guy, Pharaoh, he has a nice compound, so to speak, house or whatever I saw um, on a TikTok, I think, or somewhere on YouTube, somebody was showing, maybe it was him, because he's really braggadocious, maybe he was showing us his house himself, but wow, that's really cool that you went to Yorks, I've never seen his, his compound before, he is a powerful man, I'm pretty sure it was amazing, I'm pretty sure, that's beautiful. I'm a mentor. Who needs a mentor? Will you be my mentor? <laughs> yes, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Of course, Jane, of course. But anyway, I just wanted to come on and I'm going to add this to my YouTube channel to just to briefly discuss mentorship. Choose wisely who you're letting in your spiritual journey. That's, that's all, my only point here. Choose wisely. Choose wisely. All right, I'm about to go to the gym. I'm about to work out. Get high on life. Get high on you. Get to know thyself and get to remembering yourself is God. This video was from my heart to yours. Be blessed, babe. Bye, Jay. Thanks for being here. Thanks, everybody. Y'all have a good weekend.